Today, we explore the power of confronting mortality, drawing inspiration from Stoicism to Bhutan's unique approach to happiness. Discover how embracing the inevitability of death can unlock your mind's potential and reshape your reality. Stay tuned for insights on acceptance, attention control, and the profound impact of living in the present moment. It was a quote by Eckhart Tolle in his book The Power of Now. The first ever self-help book that I'd ever read, I realized that this teaching went far beyond modern self-help teachings. This has ancient origins with the Stoics who would live by the powerful reminder of momentum by meditating daily on the inevitability of death. They realized the urgent need to take action and live the life that they actually wanted because contemplating mortality clarified what really mattered and gave them the motivation to pursue it. The ancient philosopher Confucius also understood how reflecting on mortality highlights the importance of being present. When he wrote, we have two lives, and the second one begins when we realize that we only have one, and throughout history, there are many other cases of societies and civilizations that understood the power of confronting death. The Buddhists see death as a natural transition to help the ego dissolve. The Aztecs believe that dying is a natural part of the life cycle and it's even embraced with rituals and the people of Bhutan who think about death on a daily basis and also happen to be one of the happiest nations on earth because most people in Western civilizations live as though they're going to live forever, which causes them to have no urgency, direction or guidance. When you meditate daily upon your finite time and you realize that you're going to die, you stop taking this life for granted and are able to finally tap into the powers of the human mind that allow you to bend reality to your will. So recently I was reading this book by an author called Michael Easter, and in Bhutan, the predominant measure of success isn't GDP, it isn't gross domestic product. What they're measuring is something called GNH, gross national happiness. He came to the realization that in Bhutan, not only do they measure gross national happiness, the way they achieve utmost happiness is they ponder on death multiple times a day. So in the book, he has an exercise where he asks you, how many times a day do you think about death? How many times a day do you think about death and dying? I realized that since the age of 17, 18, after I read that Eckhart Tolle book, after I really started to think about death, I had this period in my sophomore year of college where I started to read a lot of Nietzsche, a lot of Freud, and a lot of nihilistic work, and I started to think a lot more about death. At first, it was very depressing. But then something awakened within me, and I like to call this the higher self, the self that's beyond life and death, beyond good and evil. As Nietzsche would say, in Bhutan, they think a lot about death every single day, and they don't push it aside and think about it as taboo like us Americans do. This kind of brought me to this other realization that I had, that it made a profound change in my life as it pertains to negative thoughts. This is one of the worst things you can do because the desire to get rid of a negative thought, the desire to avoid negative experience itself, is a negative experience that is the foundational basis of resistance. If you want to make a profound difference in your life and in your reality, you first need to get into the level of acceptance. But in order for them to come out, you need to get into states of acceptance states of confronting all of the things that you've been running away from. This profound change in my life happened after I started to understand these three main things that I'm going to share with you. The number one thing we have to understand is how to control our attention, realizing what it means to wake up in reality, learning how to properly direct our attention away from resistance and towards what we want. The second thing that needs to happen is learning how to direct all of this resistance that we have and channel it into intention. The final thing that needs to happen for you to make all of this click is not just saying an affirmation to yourself, but to fully realize that you have become it. 
becoming one with the thing that you once upon a time wish, waking up in reality, learning to properly direct your attention. Our attention is the only thing that we have total control over where we direct our attention. And that is surprisingly, the only thing that we need in order to gain control over our destiny. The inner screen is when you have certain thoughts, certain feelings that have completely occupied your attention, that you cannot focus on anything outside of you. When you can watch both of these two screens at the same time, your attention is in between these two screens. This is how I went from being stuck in that pattern of needing a weekly paycheck at my job to taking the risk of quitting and starting up my own business. But all of this happens beneath the surface when you try to convince yourself, oh, look, I have this. Oh, look, all of this is happening. I took a very big risk with my job to start up my business. Because when you start to fully accept the inevitability of death, the natural question becomes, what's beyond this physical life? And the more importance you put onto it, the less likely it happens. Have you ever noticed how the greatest things in life happen unexpectedly? And again, the importance level was very high to get that house. And then finally with this house that we just moved to, I noticed this importance level being high again. But then I realized, hey, with the last two houses, anything can happen. So me and my wife, we got into this full acceptance that anything could happen. It's got seven bedrooms, and it's the house that we were looking for. So to give you an example, when I quit my job and started up my business, my parents were supporting me. You come into it with the acceptance of failure that, hey, I don't know what's going to happen. The best things in life happen when you're in that I don't know stage. Because when you say I don't know, you say I'm open. You really just got to get into accepting whatever it is life is throwing at you right now. Okay. But I realize that this too shall pass. When something bad happens, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And when people look at you that you have this magnetic quality about you because your mind isn't wandering for that next thing, that next thing, you're rooted and grounded in this very moment. So whenever I realize that this too shall pass, contrary to popular belief, bad things don't happen. Bad things happen less and less. And surprisingly, it's only made better and better things happen in my life. And I know if you give up the judgment to thinking about what others say and society says about what you should be thinking and what you shouldn't be thinking and stop trying to make yourself positive all the time and just watch and accept what's happening and just accept the reality of it, that all of this too shall pass. Thank you for embarking on this journey with me. If this video resonated with you, I invite you to like and subscribe to our channel, share this video with others so they can benefit from this message, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching and for joining me, take care and see you soon.